Michael Pilarski, and I'm in my backyard in Hot Springs, Montana, and this is my first year garden. This place hadn't had a garden, at least as far as we know, for a long time. If ever, uh, the yard next door is dry and burnt up to a crisp this time of year, uh, but uh, we put irrigation on this garden. We tilled the soil this spring. It was just the grass and weeds. It didn't look particularly great soil. I said, oh, this doesn't look very good when I started, but by the time I added some manure and I added some minerals uh, and tilled it a second time, well, it started feeling, hey, not bad. And this is the result. So I'm pleased to say that uh, we got a great first year garden. Not bad for a first yard garden, first year garden in a site with not particularly great soil. And so I'd like to show you around and, and talk about some of my gardening methods here uh, and see what we can learn. Come on in. So one of the things you'll see about the garden is that uh, we're into color and beauty, aesthetics, and we want it to look good because it makes us feel good. And we want it to be very productive. Um, I, one of the things we're doing is providing a real uh, a, a table, we're setting the table for the honeybees. We're setting the table here for all these honeybees and other insects. Right now, the poppies are very much buzzing. And the hyssop is a favorite of the bees. Uh, the anise hyssop is a favorite of the, of, of the bees. I see a tiny little wasp there. I see a bumblebee there. I see a lot of honeybees, particularly gathering pollen in the poppies. Uh, usually there'll be, I see a honeybee on the uh, basil seed. I see honeybees on the holy basil. And interesting, I. I don't see any insects at the moment on the lavender. So uh, I see honeybees on the oregano, honeybees on that anise hyssop. I see some tiny wasps working on the hyssop here. Um, and uh, I even see uh, some uh, maw, several moths and, or butterflies here uh, also in the area. So at any rate, we are a haven for insects. That's one of the side benefits of what we do here. One of the things uh, you'll notice about my garden is that uh, I like to do what I call closed canopy gardening. In other words, you don't see much path. Mostly it's just uh, a, a sea of plants. This garden isn't as thick as some of my gardens, but it's, you know, I did want to be able to get around, so I still have some pathways in here. If I had more time and money, I would uh, have mulched these pathways. But this year, I'm just uh, this is just a little bit of my hobby garden because I have bigger gardens elsewhere that I just put in. So that's taking most of my energy. I guess I would say all in all that this garden is very productive for the amount of energy I put into it. We had to till it, fertilize it rake out some beds and pathway systems and plant things. Uh, and, and then I stayed on top of the irrigate, or the, well, the irrigation too, but I stayed on top of the weeding right from day, you know, early on in the game. And as a result, uh, I have a pretty much of a, a weed-free garden. There's a few weeds here and there. I can, see, I can still find, here's one uh, lamb's quarter that escaped briefly. Uh, and so there's very few weeds in the garden, and I've been able to keep up with it. So almost all of the growing space, or almost all the sunlight, is being captured by the vegetables. Uh, I like weeds later in a system, but not the first year. So uh, I have enough vegetables planted that it occupies almost all of the uh, space. Eventually, uh, I will end up with... I have a little clover growing in the path here. Eventually, I will end up with some weeds growing in the path, but uh, not too much. Here's some things, some weeds I am letting go, for instance. Not this, 
since I'm a permaculturist, I can't have no weeds in my garden or I'd get trouble. I would get feedback from my colleagues. So here's a salsify plant, which is a deep tap root, and it's not doing any harm sitting there next to this rosemary, it's vigorous. Here's my little clover, which I hope will take off. Uh, here's a dandelion, and I'm letting dandelions go to seed in my garden and, and uh, because I want more uh, dandelions in the system. Up here I'm excited that uh, I have here some chamomile that went to seed earlier this year, and I now have a forest of, of chamomile coming up volunteers. And uh, the ones that are coming up here in the path are the, uh, are the, uh, the biggest because they're more individual. So I have, uh, I'll soon have a carpet of chamomile here as a ground cover. And so that's a good, it shows that chamomile will travel around the garden. So I have to do some control. Um, here's a mallow or buttonweed or malva. And it's a useful taprooted weed as well. It doesn't spread from runners. So I tend to leave those in the system in places. There's one at your feet, for instance. Uh, and if they get too big, I just tear off the top and sh set back the roots and then it will start growing again. And uh, the reason I like to have a few weeds in the garden, in the pathways, is that they're uh, pumping energy into the, gar into the soil they're reducing compaction a little bit. They're drawing up deep-seated nutrients, getting them into the biological system. So a few weeds, uh, there's benefits to that. But mostly, as you see here, not many weeds. Here's um, thyme, rosemary, uh, with some, a few onions that ain't doing much, but uh, I get, I'm getting another little story by having a few onions. Here's holy basil. Osimum sanctum, and I grow a lot of that in my other gardens. This is for seed crop here. See, it's starting to make a brown seed pod, so I will be making a seed crop with that. Here's auric, or purple auric. I'll be getting a seed crop from that. Here's cilantro, or now turning into coriander, another seed crop. There's some mustard. Here's a mustard uh, green seed crop. Here's beets. I have uh, quite a few beets in here. This is just a small bed. Let's see here. Let's have one that's showing its form. Yeah. These are... Yeah, these are a round beet here. They're small yet need to be thin, but uh, by fall we'll have a big beet crop here. And so you can see it gets pretty close canopy in here. Here's a charred patch healthy chard, and that will be producing well into the winter. This is sort of like winter stash, so to speak. And uh, you can see uh, a lot of squash in this sector. And uh, the squash, I have two, all this squash in the whole garden, which is a big chunk of the garden, is all volunteer from two spots. One up here, one down there from a compost pile. So very fortuitous, because look what they're doing for me here. I'm getting I'm going to get a lot of nice winter squash out of the deal. And this is the lawn over here, but instead of mowing the lawn, I'm just letting the squashed have it. And so I'm turning this bit of lawn into lots of squash because the squash is over here. This is, uh, people wonder how I irrigate. Here I have one rainbird sprinkler set here that gets the whole garden from one position. So I just have to turn it on. Uh, oh, uh, for, I probably turn it on for six hours every f five days, approximately, depending on the weather. Here's another colorful squash. Here's another one. Uh, so I have a lot of basil in the garden chard. Here's some a few onions in her plant again. This is one of my accent plants. How many of you viewers can guess what this is? Are they anybody does? You have to take a close up, but this is a daga plant, or it's a Leonurus from South Africa. And it's spiky little seed balls, but we love the, the cute uh, skyscraper look of it. So that's, that's 
has medicinal uses, but I just grow it because it's pretty. Poppies, pretty. Sage. About a, oh, here's a nice spider habitat here. I see a pretty good spider web in here. I'm always happy to see lots of spiders in the garden. Uh, here's some motherwort, Leonurus relative. There's some beans in here. I haven't been keeping up with picking the beans. I have so many of my other gardens. Look, here's an elecampane, which is a medicinal root crop. Here's a few onions. Uh, always need lots of onions. And here's the hope of the future. This is next year's strawberry. This is the strawberry patch. Next year I'm going to have a lot of strawberries. Here's a Brussels sprout. That's a not yet. It's just starting to take shape. Here's another Brussels sprout. Look at that. That Brussels sprout can compete with these squash even. Um, a few peppers here. Another Ella campaign there. More onions there. There's our great big Cape gooseberry. Two plants spread there. But uh, it's a lovely medicinal fruit from uh, the Andes. Here's Some thyme, some day lilies. But look at this patch of broccoli here. This is one broccoli plant. Big head, small heads, big head, big head, small heads, big head, head. You know, this that is one heck of a broccoli plant. It's already been harvested several times, and chances are it will be, it will keep producing broccoli till uh, into November. Here's another. Broccoli, another broccoli. Here's some, a couple of, maybe a couple of eggplant. This is the Oriental Asian long eggplant. Look, this nice foil against the elecampane leaf. Here's a few dried beans, tomatoes. More so, uh, tomatoes along the back fence here, and then of course a sea of squash expanding into the distance here so uh, so that's that's a big chunk of the garden here this is this year's Hugo culture so there's a bunch of woody debris bot pile um, buried in here and where's our hole right over here you can see a here's a log sticking out here on this edge sort of the truth hole and there's a whole bunch of this in there plus other sticks and stems got a little some manure and soil and then I planted some uh, cucumbers on the top. And the idea was that this would be the cucumber hugo culture. And uh, it's working pretty good. We have a lot of cucumbers coming off of it. And again, I'm behind on the cuc harvest here. A lot of these are getting, some are getting too big. But we have a lot of cucumbers on the hugo culture. Bit of manure stockpiled for next year. So we just one little more look at the top here. Here's a tomato area. We've been picking them so you don't see much at the moment. Uh, in the front here, just a few more flowers just to uh, have the place you know, add some cheeriness to it. So there's just, here's a bronze fennel. This is a, a Puget Sound mugwort, one of the best mugworts, Artemisias uh, in the world. Very fragrant, and it's a long ways to Puget Sound, but I'm growing it here. Cosmos, and then of course, the squash. And uh, use them artichokes. Here's another squash uh, growing on the lawn, converting, you know, Lawn doesn't give me much. I do have lawn, but next year we're going to plant a lot more trees and shrubs. I'm just getting started. It's just the first year. It's a little embarrassing that I don't have more in the ground. But uh, like I said, I'm busy elsewhere teaching and organizing and wild crafting. And so I, I just come out here for a little hobby time. And plus it makes an awful lot of food for the house here. So a nice little kitchen garden, of course, it could be more, there could be more diversity, but for a first year, I'm happy to show it off. You guys can do it too.